Hello, today I'm gonna be trying out a new recipe that my wife and I affectionately call Keretz Israel. This is a recipe that's meant to combine the spiciness of North African Keretz dishes with the sweetness of Ashkenazi European uh, Keretz dishes. So to start off we're gonna be making a chili paste that's called Pilpal Chuma. Uh, Pilpal being a pepper and shum being garlic, the two main ingredients of our paste. And this is adapted from a recipe by Yotam Orulengi in the back of his Jerusalem book. We adapted it a bit more to be a bit more pilpil forward, more spice forward. Um, so let's get started. So to start out, we're gonna be steeping some of our chiles del bowl in hot water. So I'm gonna boil some water. Not too much, we're not steeping too many chilies. So while the water is boiling, I'm going to be cutting up the stems off the chilies del bol and just seeding them as much as I can. So the water is boiled, I'm just going to pour it over the chilies del bol that we have and let that sit for 30 minutes. So while the chilies del bol are steeping, I'm going to be cleaning 20 cloves of garlic. 20! That's a lot. So, for all you garlic lovers. Okay. okay, so now we have all our garlic cloves peeled and ready. I'm gonna put them into the food processor to mince. Alternatively, you could do this by hand. I'm just feeling a bit lazy right now. So the food processor it is. So now that we have our garlic all minced, we're going to cook it a little bit in an oil. Uh, now for this, you're going to be using a neutral oil. I have canola oil here, but you could also use uh, sunflower seed or grapeseed oil. Um, to get started, I'm going to put five tablespoons of this oil into a frying pan and warm it up. Now we're going to be using this oil later in our paste, so make sure to keep it and we'll do that once we get to that step. But just so you're aware that what you're gonna be using in this step is also gonna be going into your paste. So if you wanna high up the oil, make sure to use that. So I have the oil going on medium heat. I'm going to add the garlic. And we're gonna let that cook for couple minutes until it browns a little bit. So we're frying this because we want the flavor of the garlic to be more pronounced in our recipe, in our paste. So roasting the garlic like this or cooking it in the oil helps bring out those aromas and flavors a bit more. So in our pilpal chuma we're gonna be using this pilpal. It's referred to as a poblano in Mexico a pasilla in the US, or when it's dried, you can see this one's fresh, but when it's dried, it's called an ancho chili. And you can use any one of those, they're all the same and they're all equally good. You don't need to chop this up too much since it's going in the food processor. All right, so now I'm gonna make my spice blend that's gonna go into the chili paste. To start off, we're gonna be needing three and a half teaspoons of paprika. So one, two, three, and a half. There you go. Good. After that, we have two and a half teaspoons of ground cumin. One, Two and a half. Okay. Excellent. Then to that we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of caraway seeds, also known as fennel seeds. From what I understand, caraway and fennel have a slight taste difference between them, but I am hoping that it's not susceptible enough that it'll be an issue in this recipe. So that's one and a half teaspoons of caraway. Then three quarter teaspoons of salt. Three quarters, there you 
go. And then two teaspoons of cayenne. One and two. Okay. So we have our spice mix. So our chilies del bowl have been soaking in this water for 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna strain them out. Make sure to get as much moisture as you can off as reasonably can be expected. So now that the oil with our garlic has cooled down, I'm gonna strain it. And the reason we're straining this is because we really want to paste. So we could just take all of this and throw it in the food processor, but then we might run into an issue where we're not really creating a paste, it's the paste would be too runny. We're able to hit that sweet spot of it being pasty enough, but also being liquid enough to spread. So at this point, we have all our ingredients. All we need to do is combine in the food processor. All right, let's on the food processor. So now we have a bit of a paste forming, I'm going to start adding the oil. This is the oil that we saved from our garlic, so it has a bit of uh, garlic flavor to it. And I'm going to be doing this slowly as the machine runs, just to make sure that I get that perfect consistency for a paste. So let's get it going. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but I'm going to wipe down the walls a little bit to get it more evenly mixed. So with the pinnacle chuma done, all I'm gonna do is just place it in a jar. So I have here this wonderful jam jar, which makes a beautiful receptacle for the pinnacle chuma. And that's it for the first part. We have our pinnacle chuma. Next up is preparing the carrots. So it's a new day, we made our pil pil chuma yesterday and it's it had time to sit in the fridge and really marinate overnight. We got this beautiful sauce out of it. So today, we're going to be making the carrot component. So I have here about, I think it's 9 carrots, but 8 to 10 carrots is good. I'm going to start peeling them and then cutting them out into uh, coins that are maybe a centimeter deep. Putting them in a pot with some water and then letting them boil for 20 minutes. But before we do all that, we obviously got to start peeling. So let me start doing that. Look, this peeler, $2 at Target. Look, you can peel anything. You can peel carrots, you can peel potatoes, apples, mangoes. This is the number one peeler in America. So while we have the carrots boiling, which will take about 20 minutes, we can start making the mix into which the carrots will go. So we're going to start with the sweet ingredients because those are not as hard to mess up. Um, and then we'll leave the pilpul chuma for when we actually have the carrots in the mix to better gauge um, the exact spice level that we want out of this. So to start off, I'm going to put half a cup of uh, raisins. That's half a cup. And next, quarter cup of lemon juice. And then about a quarter cup of honey. Okay, let's hope that's a quarter cup. A pinch of cinnamon, so just a little bit. And then a little bit of sugar. Not too much. Let's mix them all around. So our carrots are now tender. They're at about that stage where they're soft, but they still have a bit of a bite to them, which I think is very nice. Um, it took us less than 20 minutes. Uh, this ended up taking about 15 minutes. So just pay attention to your carrots as they're boiling and make sure you stop them right at the point that's most optimal for you. So I'm gonna add the carrots now to the mix that we made. They're still a bit hot, so be careful. 
We're gonna mix them in a little bit so that they're nicely coated. Raisin, lemon juice, and honey sauce that we've made. We have a foundation, I'm gonna do a taste test. See how we're at, or where we're at. Hmm, that's very nice. Just a bit of sweetness. It's good. Let's add some salt, just a little bit. And some pepper, also just a little bit. Don't go crazy with this. Mix a bit more. Very optimal for Rosh Hashanah because you want to start off the new year on a sweet note. So the cinnamon is really coming through in the scent. Hmm. That's even nicer. As you can see, it's a lot of tweaking. Putting a little bit in, tasting. So now is the big plunge. We're gonna put the purple tumor into our mix. And once we do this, it's no going back. From here on out, it's gonna be spicy. This smells amazing, by the way. L letting it sit overnight really helped the flavors marinate, and it's really, it's really coming across on the, on the scent. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit. Garlicky, a little bit of spice. Okay, we got the vote to add a little bit more purple tuna. This much? All right. Okay. More Why? spice. Okay. Excellent. So we have our carrot Israel. I think it's really nice. And as with the purple tumor, we let this sit overnight and let the flavors marinate a little bit. It'll probably be even better tomorrow morning. Adjust this as you deem necessary. You can put some nuts in here or mint or parsley. This is just a foundational recipe. As you can see, we put raisins in here. You don't have to put raisins in here. Do whatever you like. And that's it. Carrot Israel. Uh, mix. A melting pot of different cultures from all around the world, from Russia, Ethiopia, Europe, Northern Africa, the Saudi Peninsula. That's what makes Israel a great country and what makes this recipe a great recipe. Okay, we tried waiting a full day for this to marinate, but we couldn't do it. So this video has been filmed about four hours after we put them in the refrigerator. Yeah, we're gonna plate it. It smells fantastic, by the way. I think this was enough time to to let it marinate. Oh my goodness! Oh, this smells amazing. It smells like garlic and honey and lemon. We broke out the nice the nice plates for this. Wow. Sweet, spicy, everything in one, in a bowl of carrots.